the ungodly. And it's a very powerful verse. God justifies the ungodly. How? By punishing the godly. God makes, God makes right the unrighteous by treating the righteous as unrighteous. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says this, He who knew no sin became sin for us that we... Now, let me hear him. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. That, my friends, is the gospel. Jesus comes, he stands in our place, he dies for our sins, he rises from the grave, and then he says, follow me, believe on me. What do you have to do to get eternal life? Believe on the Lord. What do you mean believe? I, I already do believe. Not just intellectually. I mean, think about it this way, right? Imagine you're in an aeroplane, and the aeroplane is coming down. And there's a parachute right there. And the parachute has a sign above it. And it says this. Put me on and you'll be okay. Put me on and you'll be okay. Well, check this out, right? It doesn't matter how much you believe that parachute can save you, right? Like, imagine, you're in an airplane, it's going down, there's a parachute. Doesn't matter how much you believe the parachute can save you, you have to put it on. Right? Because if you don't put the parachute on, you're gonna you're gonna die, right? Exactly, thank you. You're getting with my train of thought. Good man good man. Now that's what it's like with Christ Jesus. You see, because there's a lot of people that they say, Well, I believe in Jesus. You know, I believe that you know I, I believe. But they've never like grabbed a hold of them. They've never took hold of Christ. I tell you what, like I'm not saying everyone's conversion is like this but me the night i got saved i clung to christ jesus i did I t uh, some people they come into the kingdom and it's like it's like a breeze you know they started coming to the but you know what <laughs> some people it's like a whirlwind it's like god just comes along boom saved that's what the apostle paul was like there's the apostle paul what's the apostle paul doing well, he wasn't called the Apostle Paul, he was called Saul. Before he became Apostle Paul, he was called Saul, and he was a persecutor of Christians. Now listen, you have to hear this. Imagine, I'm here preaching about Christ, and imagine someone came over and threw a stone, a stone this big at my head, and I just fell down dead. That's the type of man Paul, uh, Saul was. Saul hated Christians. Saul would watch women who were Christians and they would get stuck. Saul, bang, right off the head. And he would he'd be holding their, everyone's cloak, watching everyone do it, saying, yeah, good. Like, you can't be preaching Jesus. You shut up. You're going to die. That's this, this is the type of guy we're on about. We're talking about the type of guy that not only walks past me and like spits at me or laughs at me. I'm talking about he'd he, 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 he try to kill me. This is the type of guy Saul was. He, he wasn't. Listen, he hated Christians. He hated them. And do you know what happened? He's on the road to Damascus. What's he doing? He's going to kill Christians. And do you know what happens? Jesus Christ says, Saul, Saul, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Wait, what do you mean to me? What do you mean to me? I've not done anything to you. You did it to my children. If you touch a Christian, if you're ever nasty to a Christian, you're doing it to Christ. And you know what happened there? A great light shone! And what happened? Do you know what? You know what, Saul? You're not going to be called Saul anymore. You're going to be called Paul. And do you know what, Paul? You're going to be an instrument of my mercy. That's right, Paul. Not only am I going to save you from a life of horrible wickedness, I'm actually going to change you and I'm going to do amazing things for your life. I'm not going to promise you wealth and health, but I'm going to do great things through, through you. Listen, guys. We are talking about a God who offers not only salvation, but offers a great and glorious salvation. Listen, I was a drug addict. I was a liar. I was addicted to sexual immorality. I just loved my sin. And on the 31st of July, 2009, at 10 o'clock at night, God came to me in my sin. 
and changed me. God saved me. And I knew I was a Christian. I knew I was. I couldn't hide it. I mean, I kind of wanted to hide it because I was like, if I'm a Christian, I mean, I was on holiday. I had a bunch of drugs to sell. I was ready to party. And here I am. Jesus saves me. What do I do? Well, I, I knew something was going to have to change. And, and so part of me was like, maybe if I just kind of change this little bit of my life, and then I can still kind of do that little bit of my life. And maybe I don't have to radically change for Christ. But no, I just knew. Listen, when Christ saved me, I knew something needs to change. And that next day, I told my friend, I said, listen, mate, I'm sorry. I've got to go back to Newcastle. I, I've, I, I, I've called out to God. I'm, I'm saved. I'm, I'm different. I'm changed. And you know what? I'm, I'm, this is me. This is who I am. And I, and I made that decision uh, to forsake my life and to count the cost. Are you willing to count the cost? There is a cost. Guys, listen, are you willing to count the cost? Jesus said, anyone who wants to follow me must deny themselves and pick up their cross. Jesus Christ said, if you love your mom and dad or your son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. We're talking about cost. There's a cost. Are you, listen, you better, I, I'm asking you, are you, are you willing to pay that, that pay that cost are you willing to put every single thing on the line for christ probably not i don't know i don't know your heart i don't know your mind all i can say is this is that jesus christ says the road to eternal life is narrow so that means to me that the majority of people are like no i don't want christ i want my sin i want my life i want my religion i want what i can do i want me i want i want, I want. stop let me live my life and you know what? I did that so many times in my life before before the Lord saved me. I just loved, I tell you what, I loved sin so much. Now, this is going to sound like, you may think I'm exaggerating. I loved my sin so much that even though I knew I was going to go to hell for it, I still thought it was worth it. I still thought like 60 years of sin, weighed up with an eternity, mm, I'll just enjoy my sin. That is scary. That just shows the level of depravity that man is in. Man is desperately wicked. Who can actually know anything about his heart? I'm being honest with you. But listen. Not only did God save me that night, but he changed us. What do you mean changed? I mean like, well I was living my life and I was wanting to do my sin. And then God gave me like a different appetite, right? Like, when, when you, when you, when, sometimes your appetite changes, right? I don't know if you've ever had kids, but they'll get to a certain age, and they, they once really liked something, and now they don't like it. Uh, or now they, they, they didn't like something, but now they do like it. But that's what God does in your life. He, when he saves you, you, it's not like you have to go to church. It's like you want to go to church. It's not that you have to pray. It's that you want to pray. It's not that you have to love God. It's that you want to love God. You see, your appetite changes. Your desires change. Yeah. Now, remember though, we're talking about something supernatural. To give you an illustration of this, I'll just give you one illustration and then I'm going to be finished. Conversion, salvation, is miraculous. Listen, if you actually ever get saved and, and believe on Christ, a miracle has happened. People might look at you and think, oh, you're just mad. You're just having an epiphany. Something's just going crazy in your life. Listen, if, you, if, if Christ has saved you, a miracle has happened in your life. Amen. So guys, listen. Imagine this. Imagine there's a prince. Okay? A prince. He's royal. He sits at the royal table. He eats the royal food in his royal chair with his royal gown and he does things that are royal and he's right there well listen imagine another they bring a pig into the room okay and there's this there's this food that's on the table it's the most glorious food ever it's about the nicest food you could ever imagine way better than mcdonald's not that that's hard to beat but it is extremely the best food and then 
this pig, they bring a pig in the room. I, I don't know, it's a bit of a bizarre illustration, but they bring a pig into the room. And they set this really nice banquet before the pig. And it's this lovely selections of foods. But on the left hand side, there's a pig trough. Well, let me ask you, where does the pig go? Does it go to the nice food or does it go to the pig trough? You're right, it's the pig trough. Why? Because it's a pig. And essentially that's what sinners do. Sinners will always go to their sin. When you offer them Christ and you offer them sin, they'll always go to sin. Always. But, imagine, and now this is where my fairy tale goes a bit off. But hear me out. Imagine we miraculously change that pig into a prince. Right? So the pig, sounds a bit like a Disney movie, but the pig becomes a prince. Now, something's different now, okay? So we've got this prince, he comes in, he sits down at the table, pig trough, royal food, where does the prince go? Where does he go? He's not a pig anymore, he doesn't go to the trough, he goes to the royal food, and he goes over there, and he eats it, and he enjoys it. Why? Because he's a prince. He's not a pig anymore. He's being changed. That's exactly what God does in a Christian's life. He changes them so they don't no longer love sin, but they like to do the things that are right before God. Now, exception. Is it possible for the prince to sometimes forget that he's a prince and go back to the pig trough? Yes. It's possible for Christians to sometimes sin. And listen, we aren't perfect, okay? Uh, we're not perfect. But the prince no longer stays in the trough, but he eats the royal food. He goes back to the royal food, and he predominantly survives off the royal food. That's what it's like with the Christian. The Christian, although sometimes he does sin, he's no longer... Repent for the kingdom of God is here. Yes. So, pig trough. It is possible, thank you, for a Christian to fall into sin, but the Christian is now changed and he no longer lives in sin. So, guys, what? How does that apply to you? Well, I would say this is, who are you in the story, if we're honest? If Jesus Christ says that few that did I find it, and the majority of this world are lost, where, where are you? Let me ask you, are you the pig that eats the trough? Are you the person who eats up the sin of this world and, and gets your, your sufficiency from that? Or are you the prince that, you know, trusts in God and, and eats from his word and, and, and lives off him? Who are you in this story? Who are you? I think it's quite a good story. I think it's quite a good illustration. I think it brings home the point that someone who gets saved by God... No, now listen, this is what I'm saying because I get a lot of people who say, I believe in Jesus. But if you look at the life, it's like, what? I mean, uh, I mean, I can't even begin to explain. It's like, you know something's not right. You know something's not I mean, sometimes it's like, you know, the person might have issues, you try not to be harsh, but you just know something is not right with their life. Listen, the road to eternal life is narrow, few that be that find it. But there is a few 